When it comes to action games, the very best ones are only as good as the weapons they let players wield. Across the medium, there have been countless guns, knives, sticks, explosives, and machines that literally launch cows onto the heads of enemies that players have fallen in love with. And a solid arsenal can often be enough to elevate a game in the minds of fans. It's why there's been an endless debate over which video game shotgun feels the best, which we obviously weighed in on here, plug, 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 plug. It's all about the look, the feel, and the power of a weapon that combine together to lock it into that god tier. Of course, on the other end of the spectrum, there are tools of destruction that are so useless or come with so many drawbacks that they leave you wondering whether or not they were ever intended to be used in the first place. I'm Josh from WhatCulture.com, and these are 9 video game weapons you'd be crazy to actually use. Number 9. The Suicide Gun – Duck Game Unlike other entries on this list, the Suicide Gun is purposefully a trick. Duck Game is all about frantic multiplayer side-scrolling firefights, boasting a whole selection of different guns that players need to pick up to turn the tide on their opponents. In some cases, the best weapons can be found in mystery boxes, as players scramble to unload the contents of this random drop into the faces of other players. However, not taking a second to actually check what you've been awarded can result in you not realizing you've just equipped the suicide gun and are about to unload a bunch of bullets into your own face. The game's pixel art style actually plays into hiding the gun's properties as well. While the name is a dead giveaway, you might not notice the barrel is actually pointed towards you, leading you to, well, shooting yourself. Though it's tricky, there is a way to use the gun to actually attack other players, but it's not worth taking the time to figure that out unless you're the most die-hard duck game player. Number 8. Clop. GoldenEye 64. The club is the kind of weapon that really excels in single player but completely falls to bits when it's transferred over to a competitive multiplayer setting. In the campaign for GoldenEye 64, dual wielding these bad boys can see players clearing out a room full of goons with one pull of the trigger. The submachine gun had pretty poor damage and even worse accuracy, but firing off two in the general direction of a group of enemies was guaranteed to see them riddled with bullets. However, that strength in single player is the weapon's biggest weakness in multiplayer. While the competitive suite for the iconic shooter doesn't demand total accuracy on the part of the player, it does require more consideration than fighting the AI. Usually, you'll only find yourself up against one or two other players during a firefight, and the inaccuracy of the club can prove to be a total liability. Number 7. The Bane. Borderlands 2. Now he is a weapon that I had to double, triple, and then quadruple check before including it onto this list because I was convinced that it was a total joke and didn't exist, but the Bane from Borderlands 2 is, sadly, very, very real. Even before you pick it up yourself, you're warned about it, with it being described as a cursed weapon. But because you've played plenty of games before, you probably think you know what to expect. That being a gun that will be extremely powerful, but will be just as harmful to you as it is your enemies. It's standard practice, jobs are good and you can't trick us gearbox. But it wouldn't be Borderlands if the twist was that predictable, would it? And while the weapon is hiding a devastating drawback underneath its ridiculously high stats, it's actually an attack on the player's ears rather than their character. Because every time you swap to the weapon, it will let out a shriek of SWAPPING WEAPONS that sounds almost as bad as hearing Ash belting out the chorus to bring me to life on a night out. Weapon, weapons! While every single bullet will also let out its own high-pitched noise. <laughs> Consequently, the only real way to make effective use of the weapon is to turn the volume of the TV all the way down. And even then, it'll probably have imprinted itself onto your brain so you hear it no matter what. Pew pew. Number 6. Intentional Foul. FIFA 98. Now this isn't an entry about a gun or a blade or anything that will decapitate your opponent, but the intentional foul button for FIFA 98 was absolutely still a weapon. Unlike most installments in the franchise, this World Cup themed release actually allowed players to partake in a whole bunch of underhanded tactics to get a one-up on the opposition, including intentionally fouling via shoving and the ability to dive to win a free kick or a penalty. The issue was that the system wasn't exactly sophisticated, and attempting any of these moves 99% of the time resulted in a foul being given against you. 
the virtual referee of 1998 was an unforgiving beast and would absolutely catch you out each and every time you used this tactic to the point where intentionally fouling was only useful for dealing out grief to your friend and then taking a red card. Still, FIFA 98 was also the only game in the series that let you tackle the goalkeeper when they had the ball in their box, meaning you could go right up to them and two-foot their shins for no reason at all. Number 5. Calibri Battlefield 1 Given its time period, Battlefield 1 had so much scope to really dig into the experimental weapons of the early 20th century, and the Calibri was one of the many quirky guns the devs at DICE decided to include. By far the smallest weapon in the entire arsenal, the pistol is about the size of a palm, a nifty novelty that's more for concealment and stealth than getting sick no-scope 180 headshots with. However, despite its size and terrible stats, there was a hope that there would be a secret advantage to the sidearm, which actually actually took a lot of investment to unlock, by the way. Fans hoped it would be a Men in Black situation, where the tiny looking gun was secretly the most effective on the battlefield, but alas, there was no big willy style to be found here. While the Calibri does in fact have the highest headshot multiplier across any firearm in the game, it will still take four precise rounds to put an enemy down. Outside of its novelty and the shame of being killed by it, the sidearm offers no advantages at all, and only proves to be a total liability when you run out of bullets on your primary. Number 4. A Knife and Fork The Elder Scrolls V Skyrim there is so much useless tat in Skyrim, like the iron weapons that are practically made redundant by the superior steel versions lying around Bethesda's sandbox, but none of these weird and wonderful tools hold a candle to the basic knife and fork. The non-upgradable weapons deal very little damage, but at least they can be doubled up as you wield one in each hand to really dig into your enemies for a total of three whopping damage points. Yeah, no one is realistically going to use them, and it seems like nothing more than a joke on Bethesda's part to actually make them weapons and not just junk that goes straight into a part of your inventory that you can't use. But it's still a little funny to go around provoking people with a knife in one hand and a fork in the other. It's dinner time, my dudes. Number 3. Handmaid's Ladle – Dark Souls 2 While a lot of the poor Dark Souls weapons across the franchise could theoretically be transformed into decent enough items if you put the time in to really persevere and push through the punishment, the Handmaid's Ladle from the second game is pretty much a complete joke in the same vein as Bloodborne's Shield, designed entirely to attract those looking to make the franchise's signature combat even more difficult. Designed purely for the kind of player who likes to tackle these titles without leveling up or using only one hand like our very own Rachel Shackleton, this unassuming ladle provides virtually no protection from the monsters that infest the world of Dark Souls 2. After all, it's a ladle made for soup, not knocking giants on the head with. Still, I bet that doesn't stop half of you out there, does it? Number 2. Killstar Far Cry 3 Blood Dragon Far Cry 3 Blood Dragon shamelessly brought the franchise into a whole new era of wacky, embracing pulpy sci-fi madness with an 80s B-movie inspired plot. To join the new map and enemies came a whole load of impressive sci-fi weaponry as well, including the devilishly alluring Killstar, essentially a cool rotating blade that the player can whack on their hand and fire a direct laser beam out of. It's easily one of the most impressive and spectacular methods of destruction in the entire game. Seeing enemies attempt to overwhelm you only to get pulverized by a beam that fires straight out of your wrist never gets old. Of course, it's not just an instant win bringer of death as the kill star doesn't use conventional ammo. I think you know where this is going. Instead, it draws its power from your own life force, and every second you hold the trigger is a second you're actively depleting your own health. So yeah, you can pull off some devastating scenes of mass destruction, but you'll be actively killing yourself in the process. Not a very good trade-off if you ask me. Number 1. The Knife – Resident Evil Right, okay, I concede that there'll no doubt be plenty of people watching this right now quick to point out the many, many people who have completed Resident Evil and its remake using no weapon other than the knife. But there's a reason this run has become so popular. It's bloody hard! While the knife has been a staple throughout the entirety of Capcom's franchise, it was particularly useless in the original game. 
the only means of self-defense you start off with is Chris, just about every player will have been killed trying to take out the first zombie and becoming lunch in the process. If anything, it's there to inform players that just because you can attack doesn't mean you should, and retreating might actually be a better option. Not only is the damage it deals minuscule, but it also takes up an inventory slot which, as Chris anyway, can make your life absolute hell. Even if you do get skilled with it and try to adopt the Resident Evil 4 tactic of downing a zombie and finishing it off with a blade, you'll no doubt get bitten for your efforts. It's a nightmare and you're better off swapping it out for a herb the first chance you get. So that's our list. I want to know if you guys have had better luck with these weapons than I and which ones I might have missed off here. And while you're down there, could you give us a like, share, subscribe, and head over to whatculture.com for more lists and news like this every single day. Even if you don't, though, I've been Josh. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you soon. Bye.